वेलकम टू इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मिनिमल एक्सेस मेटाबॉलिक एंड बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी सर गंगाराम हॉस्पिटल न्यू डेली आई एम डॉक्टर विवेक बिंदल एंड आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द डाविंची एस आई हाई डेफिनेशन रोबोटिक सिस्टम दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट यू कैन सी हेयर इज द लेटेस्ट डाविंची एस आई हाई डेफिनेशन सर्जिकल सिस्टम कॉमनली नोन एज सर्जिकल रोबोट it has three parts the first one is the master console where the surgeon sits and controls the movements then comes the patient cart which is a four arm patient cart in which there is one camera arm and three instrument arms which on which the instruments are mounted and they are controlled using the master controls on the master console and the third part is the vision cart in which there is a two dimensional lcd screen on which the assistants and other people can see whatsoever surgery is going on it contains the illuminator the camera control units this is the box for keeping the camera head which is a dual camera or a three dimensional stereoscopic camera so we'll come to different parts one by one this is the master console on which the surgeon sits and controls the movements of all the instrument arms on the patient cart this consists of various parts such as the stereo viewer in which the surgeon can see a three dimensional high definition view of the surgical field with the help of binocular vision provided with stereoscope there is a microphone by which the surgeon can speak and it is listened to by the assistants from the speaker on the lcd screen of the vision cart there are infrared sensors which sense the head of the surgeon and the as soon as surgeon takes out his head from the stereo viewer the instruments are freezed in that particular moment so they cannot move unless and until the surgeon puts his head inside the studio viewer this is a safety feature in order to prevent inadvertent movement of the instruments if the surgeon is looking outside this is the armrest which contains the left side pod and the right side pod the right side pod contains the power button which has to be pressed in order to switch on the entire system and it contains an emergency stop button which can be pressed in case the surgeon wants to freeze the system there and then these are the ergonomic controls there are four type of controls this one is for foot pedal in and foot pedal out this one is for adjusting the height of the armrest this is armrest down and this is armrest up and this one is for height of the shell master console shell this is moving up and down and this is for the tilt of the shell so all these movements can be adjusted according to the surgeon height and therefore the surgeon can be ergonomically comfortably sitting on the console while performing long surgeries without aching his spine or his neck and these arms can be moved using these buttons this is the port clutch button which is used to move the arm grossly and this is the clutch button which is used to move the distal aspect of the arm in whatsoever direction you want to if i explain this you see these this is the white portion of the portion you can see here this is the white portion of the arm and this is the silver portion of the arm the joints which are in the white portion of the arm they move by pressing this port clutch button as you can see i am able to move the arm down and up 
and in various directions by pressing the port clutch button. And by pressing this clutch button, I can move the silver portion of the arm. If I press this, I have to release this rather than keep it pressed and I can move the silver portion of the arm like this in and out rotate it so this leads to finer movement and this leads to all the movements from the master controllers the master controllers cannot move the proximal aspect of the arm they can move just this silver part of the arm not the proximal aspect of the arm this port clutch button is given at the back end of the arm also in order to facilitate easy pressing while docking. Docking is the process of application of these instrument arms to the ports placed on the patient's body. As you can see this works on pulley system. There are various pulleys. You can see here pulleys and cords and they move, they provide the endorist function to the instruments and various wires are running and there are motors these are the motors which rotate and they rotate various wires accordingly in order to simulate the movement of the surgeon's wrist onto the instrument tips these arms are numbered 1, 2, 1, 2 and 3 and there is if you can see here there is a mark here which can be rotated with the help of port clutch button these two marks should be matched these two marks should be matched in order to make it at an angle of 90 degree so that the docking is perfect and there is no external arm clashing So now this is the camera arm and you will appreciate that there is a thick blue line on the camera arm here. This is the thick blue line and this contains a blue arrow as well. So this is called the sweet spot. The sweet spot has to be in this thick blue band in order to avoid any external arm clashing and proper movement of the camera and ideally it should be in the center of the thick blue band like this this particular setup joint which contains the sweet spot if the instrument arm 3 is being used if it is on the right side of the cart the setup joint faces the left side of the cart but if the third arm is being used on the left side this setup joint should move to the right side as I will show you now like this if the third arm is on the left side the setup joint should move like this but because our third arm is on the right side so we will move it back using the port clutch button This is again the second instrument arm and the third instrument arm. The third arm can be taken from both the sides of the cart as I already told you. Now the third arm has to be brought behind the patient cart. So to store the third arm, you have to bring it here. The third number should face towards you. Pressing the port clutch button, you just move the setup joints together. Press this clutch button and just pack the arm, pack the arm and just take it behind the setup joint and just move it down. So this is the stored position of the third arm and now to take it out just have to press the port clutch again. Remove the arm like this 
and it will automatically open up there is this lock for rotating the third arm onto the opposite side so you have to open this clip press the port lock button and rotate it out of the lock So now the third arm can be taken to the opposite side and it is locked in position. So this is regarding the movement of the arms. These are the quick click cannula mounts. These can be opened and closed and the cannulas can be mounted onto these mounts. And this is the place for camera arm sterile adapter. These are the shift switches onto the patient cart. You can see here there is a drive position in the name of D and a neutral position in the name of N. So if these switches are made to drive position, you can drive the patient cart by motor. And if you switch it to N position, you have to push the patient cart or otherwise they will not move with the help of the motor inside so you can see here this is the power switch for the patient cart this is the throttle which can be throttled anteriorly or posteriorly and this is the throttle enable switch which has to be pressed in order to move the patient cart so if you want to move it you just have to press the throttle enable switch and press the throttle like i'll show you See the cart is moving ahead, the more I rotate the throttle the faster it will move ahead and if I rotate it back it will move backwards. And this can be moved to left and right by turning the handle to this direction and to this direction. If you don't want to use the drive buttons you push these switches shift switches in the neutral position and you can just push the cart manually this is the vision cart which contains the 24 inches lcd screen which displays all the controls the instrument arms the instruments installed on each of the arm the camera position its rotation the scope direction 0 degree or 30 degree down or 30 degree up and there are various adjustments you can do this is a touch screen you just touch you can use the video source video settings audio settings and utilities and you can see troubleshooting and event logs and you can see the inventory management and this also provides with illustration you can just mark on the screen and the surgeon will be able to see on the master console whatsoever assistant wants to say and it just goes off like this so this is the illustration facility and the assistant can point out to some structure if he wants to during the surgery. So and these are the speakers in which whatsoever surgeon speaks come out and this is the microphone from which whatsoever is spoken by the assistant is carried on to the master console. So this can help in distant surgery if the master console is away from the patient cart even then the communication is not hampered in between the surgeon and the assistant this is the illuminator in which this is the light cable the setting has to be kept 200 almost always this is the camera control unit cable in which there are two camera control units inside this one CCU and this is the drawer to keep the camera head if you take out this camera head the two eyes provide with the three dimensional view of the surgical field this is the camera head on which there are various buttons to control various functions like these arrows to control the focus this button to control the white balance and the 3d calibration and this is the button to control the illuminator settings 
this is a lock to lock the camera cover with the sterile drape remember this is unsterile and you have to drape it with a sterile cover in order to use it you can house the cautery or the insufflator in these shelves and now these are the instruments for the robotic surgery these are 8 mm endo wristed instruments which are kept for the robotic surgery these are the 8 mm da vinci metallic ports this is the 30 degree stereo endoscope which you can see there are two scopes inbuilt within one scope and there are two light sources coming at the end of the scope also this is the obturator and these are the sterile drapes so we'll show you how to assemble the camera and the, how to drape the patient cart and how to dock the robot coming to the draping of the robotic system these are sterile drapes provided by intuitive surgical they have to be opened this is a three arm drape this is a three arm drape in which there are eight mm cannula seals which have to be opened to place on the ports there is one camera drape in order to drape the camera head there is one camera arm drape and there are two instrument arm drapes in order to drape the instrument arms this is an instrument arm drape we have to open the arm by pressing the port clutch and the clutch buttons and splay the arm and take it to your optimum height and then you take the camera the instrument arm cover from the sterile trolley These are opened up and after opening out this chip, just hold the camera arms, the instrument arms sterile adapter erect. And just place it onto the instrument arm the sterile adapter has to come here and after it has been placed nicely you can see the pulleys are rotating and they can be pressed easily and so they are well placed now you can just by pressing this button you can just make it into an optimum position and open up the drape the unstyled person can hold the drape distal to the blue line and just set the drape right in the quick cannula mount as well all this has to be done using the port clutch and the clutch buttons Once this is set in the quick cannula mount, press the clutch, open up the arm, and you just apply these tapes around so as to fix the lid. Care should be taken not to strap around the port clutch button these have to be strapped all around and they hold the camera drape all the instrument drape in, in position and then 
the arm is taken to its proper position. Now to drape the camera arm, it has again to be opened up. The setup joints need to be opened up, and the height is adjusted. <coughs> we carry the camera arm drape. As you can see here on the stereo trolley, like this. and open up the small chips and we have to just hold it from here This is the camera arm sterile adapter which has to come onto the sterile adapter holder. By pressing these two clips and taking out any plastic material in between the two. And this has to stand erect. And then the drape can be taken along the setup joint for clearly. This particular uh, position of drape has to come at this setup joint in order to allow its movement. Now this is again inserted into the quick camera mount. And this has to be checked by pushing it down. This should be able to come down properly and then to come back on its own. Same way the third arm is also there. And you again put up these straps across just to secure the drip. So now this provides a sterile interface to put the instruments onto the robotic arm. So this is the camera head drape which is used to drape the camera head. You have to insert your hand inside it and hold the sterile adapter and an unstrained person will hold the camera head. Mr. Rimat Rathi is assisting me in breaking the camera now. So, okay. 
This click has to come by rotating the handle on the camera arm and you can hold the dress distal to the blue line. And we have to continue dressing the camera arm and putting it onto the trolley. In an S shape, the camera cable should not bend, otherwise it can break. And this has to be placed on the trolley like this. This is the place where the camera clip on the camera instrument, camera arm is applied. Now this is the instrument trolley. These are the 8 mm robotic endo listed instruments which can be turned with the help of these pulleys and there are various channels to wash the instrument. These are the 8 mm metallic reusable Da Vinci ports which are placed inside the patient's body which have a remote center technology. That is, this thick blue band is kept at the facial level of the patient's abdomen and this does not move in space. But for the other part of the port, so that no extra pressure or trauma is exerted on the port site. These are the disposable seals which come with the drape set and these are applied onto the 8 mm pro card and if you wish to put in a 5 mm instrument you have to press the seal like this and you can easily insert iron instrument to the same port. This is the blunt obturator which is inserted into the port to insert it in the patient's abdomen and it can be taken out like this. This is the 30 degree scope which is used for having a three dimensional vision because it is having two scopes within one scope. So now I will place the 30 degree scope onto the camera head and lock it. So this is a 30 degree down position and this is being displayed on the LCD screen as well. If I switch on the illuminator, this is switched on and now I have to white balance it and I have to do the three dimensional calibration using these buttons. Now I will switch off the illuminator, I will keep the scope here. In order to demonstrate the remote center technology, if we place this port here in the cannula mount and now you fix your vision onto this thick black band. Howsoever I may move this arm, this black band is not going to move in space. So there is no pressure exerted onto the patient's body. This is what is meant by remote center technology. Now you see, I will put my two fingers across this thick, blue bag, thick black band and in spite of moving it anywhere, this point is not moving in space. See my hand is stationary and it is not exerting any pressure on my hand. So this is another advantage of this technology. Now I'll 
position the card for docking. To position the card for docking, you have to see that the sweet spot is aligned. The camera arm and the center column are aligned in the same direction and this has to be taken care of by using the clutch button and these numbers 1 and 2 are facing your side and these are making an approximate angle of around 45 degrees to each other I will insert the force onto the patient's body The camera port should be at least 10 centimeters away from R1 and R2 ports. And if they form a triangle, the base of triangle should face towards the patient card's center column and the camera arm. That means the camera arm or the camera port, the target anatomy and the patient card's center column should be in the same straight line. This camera port is placed at least 20 centimeters from the target anatomy. So this distance from target anatomy is 20 centimeters. This distance is 8 to 10 centimeters. This distance is 8 to 10 centimeters. And they form a triangle and this base of triangle is facing the patient card. So these principles have to be kept in mind in order to avoid any external arm clashing and to provide for a good docking. So now I'll ask the patient card to come forwards it has to come forward slowly in the direction you want towards your right please towards your right towards your right yes towards your left slightly left slightly left yes now straight towards your right towards your right 10 centimeters towards your right that's it that's it that's it 5 cm straight that's it that's it now you have to make the arm parallel to the port in order to dock it that is first the camera port has to be docked and it has to be docked after making it parallel you see that the quick click cannula mounts are open and it is well draped and then you insert this into the camera arm by using the port clutch button and close the clip there should be no undue pressure on the clip Draping it right is very important Otherwise this can itself, this drape can itself obstruct in proper docking of the system So now it is docked R1 I make the arm parallel parallel to the port by using the port clutch button is the focus on it? is the focus on it? so now you have to make it parallel take it inside the clip and lock it this arm is also docked to dock the third arm again RT is made parallel to the port the draping is checked whether it is draped correctly or not and the port is placed inside the arm once it is parallel only if the arm is parallel, it will be dogged nicely, otherwise you can break these clips.
so this is again dock so the docking is complete and now you can see that these arms are well separated from each other and there will be no external arm clashing even if i move them to a great extent so the setup joints can move without causing any external arm clashing and this is not causing any trauma on to the abdominal wall because the remote center is at the facial level so that point is not at all moving while you are moving the robotic arm the remote center has always always to be taken at the facial level you can see here also it is moving nicely now the scope will be put inside and you can start operating using your master console to undock this again if you come near to me you can see you have to just open the clips on the quick click cannula mount press the port clutch button and you can remove the arm like this in case you want to do an emergency undocking in case there is a bleeding or anything like that what you can do is you can just press the port clutch button and you can take the whole assembly out in just a moment like this like this like this so this provides for an emergency undocking of the system and you can do it in a in around 30 seconds you can remove whole of the arms and the port So, in case there is any inner root and bleeding, or if you want to convert it directly to a laparoscopic or open surgery, you can just undock it within a matter of seconds. So, these are the endo-rested instruments, which are inserted onto the robotic arms like this, and then they are identified by the robotic arms. They can be just released by pressing the release levers, and they can be taken out. and we can be placed back these instruments are 10 uses per instrument and after 10 uses the instruments cannot be used for any further use so this technology provides us with many advantages like three dimensional stereoscopic vision and or rested instruments providing 7 degrees of freedom scaling of motion precise because of filtration of physiological tremors the remote center technology causing less port side trauma a single surgeon capable of manipulating four arms including one camera arm and three instrument arms the possibility of tele surgery the surgeon sitting separately away from the patient leading to better patient outcomes and more advances in surgery the better variants of this system are expected in near future especially because of lack of haptic feedback in this system which can be taken care of in the future systems and as of now this is a bulky equipment needs special technical training to run the system so all these shortcomings along with the cost should be overcome within next few years we at institute of minimal access metabolic and bariatric surgery sargangaram hospital new delhi india thank you for listening to this instructional video on robotic surgery